Ladies, well, Casper Tigers 28, a bad blow, hammer blow, this one for Wakefield Trinity, of course. Oh dear, lots of controversy. Let's start right there and then, shall we? Josh Griffin, can somebody please explain to me why that first Josh Griffin try was chalked off for Wakefield? Absolutely disgraceful officiating. Went up to the screen. I mean, Matty Asher takes one foot towards the ball. First of all, his run through the line doesn't impede absolutely anybody. He's out of the play. He's not even contesting that ball. He takes one step towards the ball and it's chalked off. Hideous decision, stupid decision. I don't think, you know, we can't say that that was the the the, the game changer, of course, because Griffin quickly got on the score sheet after that. Great debut, actually, by Josh Griffin. It must be said he had a point to prove, didn't he, to Tony Smith and by Lord, did he arrive on the shores of Wakefield in fine feckle indeed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you'd have to say, I mean, dearie, dear me, shocker. And of course, Tommy Lannan had one shot off as well for Wakefield for a forward pass. And, you know, that's, again, we've, we've seen them not given over the course of the season. So a bit of bad luck in this one for Wakefield. But that said, it was a poor affair. I don't think it was a classic game of rugby league, but it was toe to toe. It was a street fight. Who wanted it most, as they say? And of course, that was the Casper Tigers, a very professional performance. Danny Wall will be delighted with his uh, first outing as Casper Tigers boss. He uh, will be very, very pleased indeed with the performances of his team. We said in Game of the Week, this was a close affair. We looked at the head to head, both of these two teams. There was a whisker between them, and it proved exactly the same in this game. Let me run you through some key statistics. Okay. Tackles 304 played 302 in the favour of Wakefield. Missed tackles 36 from Wakey, 38 from Castleford. Tackle bus 38 from Wakey, 36 from Castleford. Meters gained 1,311 for Wakey, 1,324 for Castleford Tigers. Errors 76 and penalty 76. More going the way of Wakefield Trinity. That's how close this game was. We've already said a couple of tries chalked off for Wakefield in this game. Where was it won? Well, quite frankly, the maestro, the man himself, one of the best finishers in Super League. A hat trick for Mr. Gregory Eden. Oh, yes. Great player. Absolutely sensational, isn't he, Greg Eden? Is there a better finisher in Super League? You know, this guy, when he plays for Casterford, he ought, more often than not gets over the line. He took his drives brilliantly well. You know, you have to say, Eden, the difference. He's got two against Wakey early in the season. He loves playing against Wakey. Greg Eden, we salute you, sir. I would say a shoe in for this week's team of the week without question. Outstanding performance. It wasn't just his tries, you know, yet again, Eden showing what he's like, you know, 161 metres, you know, many of them coming out of backfield. I mean, he started on front foot, didn't he? That first break that he got, 19 carries in the game, six tackle busts. Greg Eden, absolutely superb. Four clean breaks as well. What a, what a performance this one was from Greg Eden. For me, clearly the man of the match on the night. That's just my opinion. There you go. We'll just leave it there. Thought Austin was a bit off for Casper. Didn't really think Brett, Brett, uh, Blake Austin had a good game. I thought Widdop was really suspect under the high ball. Again, I don't think Wakefield took full advantage of that throughout the game. Widdop, though, of course, getting three assists in this game and getting four kicks from two. So he overall he had a decent game but I do think if they'd have peppered him a bit more uh, with some of those high bombs maybe Wakey would have had a bit more joy I thought Jowett we picked Jowett out in game of the week Jowett yet again great try from Max Jowett lovely work on the right hand side uh, from Max we really like Max Jowett if, if Wakey were to go down I think Jowett will be picked up another player I think will be picked up will be Jai Whitbread another great performance from Jai Whitbread 108 metres from Whitbread uh, 31 tackles he's really good on both sides of the ball we talked about the middle unit, didn't we, in Game of the Week, you know, which middle unit, and we highlighted the likes of, you know, uh, Fafita. We looked at, um, oh, who else do we have in there? We had Fafita, we had Whitbread, and we had, who was the third one, ladies and gentlemen? That was it, Tony, wasn't it? And we pitted them up against Griffin, against uh, Liam Watts, and against, oh, the last one again, it evades me, uh, Griffin, Massey, Massey Griffin and Watts. And it was 303, played 149 to Wakey. We said it, Wakey had a far more potent uh, middle unit and it proved true on the day, without doubt whatsoever. So Wakey won that middle battle, but across the across the board, you know, it was pretty, pretty poor. I'll tell you a player who played bad for, for Wakey, Kevin Proctor. Deary, dearie me. You know, he only carried the ball four times for 21 metres. Uh, he only tackled seven times in the game. You know, Proctor at loose forward didn't quite understand that, you know, and yet you're having a player with the passion and the pride of, of Mr. Liam Kay on the bench. That didn't quite sit with me, if I was being perfectly honest. I don't think it's over yet. I really don't. I think Wakefield, you know, they've shown this season they can go up against some big, big size Wigan, of course, being the, the great example of that and turn them over. As for Cash, yesterday, They've done the double over Wakey now. They've done the double over Leeds. And, of course, they've 
beating Warrington. But, you know, for me, Wakey have shown against some really tough opposition. They've got the character to actually go and get a win. Castleford haven't really shown that this season. Castleford's running is an absolute shocker. Uh, Wakefield isn't easy. Wakefield have got Salford and KR in there. They may think they, they stand a chance of picking some points up against. But when you look at the Castleford one, Saints, Warrington, Hull FC, Wigan and Leeds, ouch. Yes, of course, they beat uh, Leeds home and away this season. That should could be an opportunity for two points at Headingley. But, you know, it's a really, on paper, it's a really tough running, that one for Castleford. Next up for them, Saints, Helens at home for Wakey. It's going to be Salford away. I don't think it's over. There's, of course, that 52, 54 point deficit now as well in the points to, for and against. That could be crucial come the end of the season as well. Really now, I think Wakefield need two wins from the from their remaining fixtures. I just don't think they're going to be able to do it. I think it's been a really good effort from them to drag themselves out of relegation, but I just get the feeling now that the momentum has shifted to the cast of the Tigers. Perhaps the Tigers will be the ones that will be in Super League again next year. But in this topsy-turvy season that we're enjoying Join who's to say that's our first in the sheds of round number 22 we hope you've enjoyed it subscribe share comment do all the usual bits and we'll see you next time all the best for now.